everybody. Great seeing you back again. Thanks for joining me in this new video. A couple of people have dem asked me to demonstrate how I do my bug bounty hunting. And for my bug bounty hunting, I basically have two different stages. The first stage is recon. So I go to uh, I go through a di few different tools on my target uh, and I scan them in the background while I'm doing my active hacking if the target allows it, of course. Check the project page to make sure. Uh, the first tool I'm going to show you is Nmap and I'm also going to be showing you Nikto. So uh, let's dive right in. Uh, Nmap is a network mapper. What it basically does is it will scan your network. Is it will, Sorry. It'll scan the IP addresses that you give it. So for example, there are a few different things you can do. I'm going to, I have the help file here open. Uh, what I'm going to, here there, the examples are. So as you can see, there are a few different options you can enter. You can enter, uh, here we go, a domain name. It will automatically translate that domain name to an IP address to scan via DNS resolution. Of course, you can also enter a range of IP addresses via the slash uh, subset. So this will give you a subset of IP addresses. You can enter multiple IP addresses. Uh, there are a lot of different options you have. You can also enter a file. For example, if you use the minus IL parameter, you can input a list that will uh, open up the file you specify and it will go over each of the items in that list. Uh, but what I'm going to be showing you today is, I'm going to clear this first. Uh, let's clear this real quick. There we go. So what I want to be showing you today is I'm going to do my first command, which I always do on the target. So for example, I want to attack google.com, www.google.com. I'll usually use this command. So I'll go over the parameters real quick with you guys. Google new .txt, uh, no, not .txt, and as the last one, we have to enter the domain we want to attack. So the parameters real quick, sc, this parameter will do a script scan. So it will, when it find, I'm going to explain what nmap does real quick first. nmap is going to go over the, uh, the 1000, I think, don't pin me down on this, but I think it's the top 1000 ports on the IP address that you gave uh, Nmap will be scanned to see if they are open, those ports. Uh, of course, you can still give it a range of any port you want. For example, at this time, it will only scan the ports that I, uh, the f top 1000 ports, but I can also just do port uh, 1. Let me get the help file real quick here. There we go. So if I want to do different ports, as you can see in here, um, real quick, host discovery. There we go, minus P port range. This would be my specific syntax. This would scan all the ports that there are from one to 65,535. Now, I don't want to do that for my first scan. My first scan has to be light. I want to do this real. I do all of my nmap scans in stages pretty much. My first scan has to be light. It has to scan the first 1000 ports in TCP mode because UDP mode is slower to detect. And the SC parameter pretty much tells nmap that I want to do script scanning on the ports that are open. So when it finds a port, it will do the default scripts for that specific port. And SV doesn't to grab the version information or the banner information. So I want to know <clears throat> exactly what version of the web server is being used, what version of SMTP server is being used, etc. Now the OA, the O indicates output and A indicates all three popular formats. Those are nmap, gmap, and gnmap, and xml. Those will be my output formats. Now I'm going to start my scan real quick. Uh, and I'm also going to end it real quick. I already did this scan before because it takes a little while. So I'm going to uh, show you guys the directory real quick. As you can see, I did a few scans before. And I'm going to show you the google.nmap file. Now, a lot of information in here. First thing I want to show you guys, I gave it www.google.com to scan. 
and what it did it is it made a DNS resolution to this specific IP address. Now it's going to scan this IP address for all open for the top 1000 ports. As you can see, 909, 979 ports are not shown, 3 ports are open, port 25, port 80 and port 443. Now, as you can see some data has been returned. This is from the possibly from the script scanning or from the version information grabber. Uh, and this information, as you can see, is not really useful to us. It's also not really useful to Nmap, which is why it's telling us that it's found two unrecognized uh, services, despite them returning data. And if we know these services, to submit the specific fingerprint here. Now, I don't know these services. These are by Google. I have no clue. So <laughs> that's the first stage. When this stage is done, I usually add on a different layer. So I go back and I add on my second layer and I go as you now what this parameter of course you have to make sure that you put the parameter in the right spot. What this parameter will do is it also scans UDP ports. So this will go TCP scanning and UDP scanning. Um, it's really important to also do this because a lot of services will be hidden on UDP. This is really slow it will take you a lot longer but it's really important to do now as I said before another thing you can do is add this specific parameter to scan all the ports uh, and that's pretty much so first stage I just do SC and SV as parameters for script scanning and version information grabbing on my second stage I'll also do SU for UDP ports and on the very last stage I'll do all the ports that I can find. Now there are better ways to do this, I know. I'll make a video about that soon, but I haven't mastered that yet sufficiently, so I won't be explaining it. I haven't mastered it yet. Next thing I want to show you guys is Nikto. So as you can see, I've already been trying a few things here. Nikto is really easy. The parameter specifically to do Nikto, so what you need to do is just add minus minus host, and then you just go the specific host that you want. Now two things I want to tell you guys here. One thing I'm doing as you can see a port 80 scan. When you see Nikto you should always always do an HTTPS scan as well if the site allows it. Sometimes different content that can be returned on the 443 port as opposed to the 80 port. Now what I want to do is go over some of these results with you guys real quick and First of all, show you what Nikto does. So Nikto, I'm going to open the website real quick. These guys, they know it better than anyone. <laughs> Nikto is an open source GPL web server scanner which performs comprehensive tests against web servers for multiple items, including over 6,700 potentially dangerous files programs. It checks for the outdated versions of 12,050 servers and version specific problems on over 250 servers. This is a lot of information to take in. I want to tell you guys a few things that you have to remember. Um, Nikto, it'll do uh, scanning and it'll return a lot of false positives. What it will also do is, for example, entry search about in robots.txt return a non-forbidden 301. So this is a good thing. Uh, what it will do is go into the robots.txt file for us. So if we go to the site ourselves, uh, google slash robots.txt you can see a lot of things in here and as you can see Nikto just tries to open them all Send, uh, so entry search about did not return a non-forbidden return a non-forbidden or redirect code so this is pretty interesting information as you can see now of course robots.txt these guys know what they're, know what they're doing they're google it's their search caller um, so this is what Nikto does specifically and my these are the scans I have running in the background. I'll start up Nmap, I'll start up Nikto. Another thing I'll possibly start but it'll, it'll depend heavily on the program because some programs don't like it when you do this. But you probably already know GoBuster. Um, GoBuster helps you brute force your directories. So if I go GoBuster dir, as you can see you need 
unavailable command. So I want to do dir for directory uh, busting, and I have to specify a URL. So I have to go to, uh, of course, enter the argument as well, google.com, voila. And I will also need a word list. I don't have a word list on here, but you can enter pretty much any word list you have. Let's make a really quick word list. So let's go in here and nano word list .txt. We'll add a few words, test, search, and blah. There we go, this is our new word list. So word list is word list .txt. And as you can see for search, we found a 302. So uh, the word lists, if you guys want to know a good resource for word lists, just go for word lists, go to Google. Up, up, uh, word lists from .mil. Here we go, I'll put these in the description as well. These are the word lists that I use, or the Kali default ones. It's what's, it's pretty much up to you. Um, you can also just Google for word lists if you would like another word list, if you would like a specific word list. Um, there are a lot of options you can use. Uh, for Durbuster, I usually use the Godmilk's um, medium directory word list, um, but it's the, the power of Go Buster, and what I want to uh, give you guys as a last tip, Go Buster is really powerful since it uses Go, so it can start a lot of processes simultaneously, and it's really fast in scanning. Uh, but the power of Go Buster is when you can get a word list that fits really good with your target. For example, if I'm attacking Jira, I'm going to look for a specific Jira word list. If I'm attacking another service desk, I'm going to be looking for a word list that has that service desk in mind. Uh, custom tailored word lists are your biggest weapon when using GoBuster. There are other ways of finding content, but those usually cost money. I, I'm talking about the Burp Pro uh, version, there you can discover content. It is sort of like a web crawler. There are other ways to find content. You can, for example, go to the Wayback Machine. And Wayback Machine also has a lot of information. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys this real quick as well. I'm just going to go for google.com. And there we go. Google.com. What I want to show you guys is that Wayback Machine has added a few new features. So. It has added the collections feature. In here you can see uh, a few different resources that the website uses. If it will load, of course. There we go. So this is not as useful, but in here you can see uh, different collections from that specific target that you have. The changes to the website, this can be useful because sometimes you can see, for example, here there have been a lot of changes to google.com and here they haven't been. What the Wayback Machine does is it basically indexes all the websites on the internet at regular intervals, and you can go back to those uh, websites. Now the summary on google.com won't load. I'm expecting that's because it's way too big. Yeah, it's, it's probably way too big. In a summary, it's also pretty useful. And the last useful thing I want to give you guys is the sitemap. Now the sitemap will give you a sort of a pie chart describing all of the different uh, sub-URLs on your domain and it will go deeper and deeper into that specific stuff. So for example it will go to google.com slash search will be one part of the pie chart and the next part will be search slash q equals blah 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 and there might be a part search slash admin and that will be another part. I'm trying to show you guys but as you can see it's not loading. Um, but this is pretty much my recon phase. The next video will be more about active attacking. Um, I have a methodology that I want to share with you guys now. I'm also working with a, uh, some other people on a bigger methodology. It is based on the Web Application Hacker's Handbook. A really good book, by the way. I really recommend that to you guys. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, if you made it this far in the video, please leave a like if you liked the video. And please subscribe. Um, hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.